Andy Mitten, a very good morning to you. It's not a very good morning, and no. you know it's <laughs> but I'm happy to join you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it must be difficult for any Manchester United supporter this morning. Is what Rio Ferdinand is saying there, is that correct? Is, is there a legacy of this now where young people are now looking at Manchester United and not going to support the team, and then the whole richest club in the world thing will now start to fall by the wayside? Well, there's a couple of points there. I think the gist yeah. of what Rio's saying is correct. It hasn't been good enough. It isn't good enough. The club have been failing. And last night seemed to be a, a new low. The support is still huge. The fact that they're still getting over 70,000 for a, a game at home to Burnley in January. I think that was the ninth home league game since the start of December. It just shows the support. Yeah. Barcelona had 64,000 at the weekend. And they're supposed to be the biggest club uh, in, in the world. But... This is just clouding the fact Manchester United are failing. Last night was the 50 feet since Watford one month ago. It's not even close to being good enough for a club with the second highest wage bill in world football. And there are many uh, culpable people. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is the team manager. He's got to take some of the blame. You heard the fans' reactions to the Glazers, to Ed Woodward. They're also culpable as well. And I think the fans at matches, they've been very, very supportive. Mm. And the patience has finally snapped. It... There were songs at AZ away in September at Newcastle away in October, but you've now seen at the last two home games, Manchester United fans in, in open discontent against the leading executive at the club and, and the club owner. Was it a very noticeable shift last night, Andy, when people started to leave the ground? Were you thinking to yourself, oh, right, I haven't actually seen this too often? But people have always left early, mm. right, rightly or wrongly. And I defend the lads who sell the fanzine because they've got to get out of the ground early to actually sell <laughs> United we stand. And you know, fans have always left early, even when the team's win winning 4-0. And all it takes is for three or 4,000 people to go uh, before the end of the game for it to be noticeable. But what I noticed uh, during the game yesterday, there's empty seats during the match right at the start of the game. And when you start to see empty seats at Old Trafford, and that... The weakest demand for any league game at Manchester United is always midweek, January at home. We used to play Stoke all the time. Now it seems to be Burnley at home. But if you start seeing empty seats at Old Trafford for league games, that is a that is a major worry yeah. because the club support has been famed for, for, for selling out of Old Trafford. The mood has definitely shifted at home games in the last month and it's there for everybody to, hit, to hear. The fans are, are, are in mutiny about what's happening. Mutiny. So it, it, that is the sort of thing, that, that is the sort of word that you would think might actually affect change. Will it affect change? Are the people who are running Manchester United look at the people walking out, the mutiny in the stands and think to themselves, right, we need to make swift action here either by changing the manager or changing those who are actually running the football operations at the club? Fans were still singing for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last night. The fans would say that the owners and the executives are more culpable than the manager. Um, I think the fans would love to see the owners change. I think they'd love to see them disappear off into the distance and say, we've made our money. They've got no obligation to do that. They're mm. making money. They've got a cash cow there. Same with um, Ed Woodward. He's not popular. He's never been popular. I interviewed him in October. I put very tough questions to him. I ask him exactly the same questions tomorrow because my readers and Manchester United fans were extremely worried about the direction of the club. The club, unlike what Rio says, they do think they've got a plan in place. That plan is bringing young, predominantly uh, British players through and they think it's going to take time. But the, there has to be been minimum requirements here and losing at home to Burnley isn't one of them. And th it wasn't isolated either. This is the 50 feet in a month. Mm. This is now becoming a, a trend. People can handle one-off defeats, but the squad looks threadbare. Fans were worried about this at the start of the season. Now, if the fans were worried about it and moderate fans were worried about it, then why weren't the club worried about it? Because we, there's now three of the key players missing and how it shows, because you've got Burnley coming to Old Trafford, a team of United beat quite comfortably a month ago away and winning quite comfortably. And the fans are absolutely outraged. The season is still alive. Uh, they are still in the, the FA Cup at the weekend. They've got the Europa League just about in the League Cup. I can't really see Manchester United getting anything at Manchester City again, but I couldn't in the league in December. But the confidence in the team is so low at the moment that there's a real danger that this season's going to peter out into nothingness like it did last season. The, the one thing that could ensure a season doesn't peter out into nothingness, well, it, it wouldn't ensure it, but it might go some way to stopping that, is to appoint a new manager, Andy. And like the idea that they're in fifth, I get the argument that 
that's where they are and they're still in the hunt for the Champions League places and, and good on Oli for getting them there. But you can flip that on its head and say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer CV has been completely empty up until this point that a new manager bound, somebody with a far more impressive CV would be able to give them the kick required to actually cement that top four place because I just don't see it in him even though they are in fourth to actually go and get fourth. Even though they are fifth I should say to go and get fourth. It's like last season nobody wants to get that fourth, fourth mm. spot. It's league form has been really, really inconsistent and not good enough, not even close to being uh, acceptable. So, yeah, if you change your manager, you bring someone in, someone experienced, a guaranteed winner, like Jose Mourinho, someone who's been around, done it all, really well respected, like Louis van Gaal. It, the changes have not been working and I'm not saying that they shouldn't change now. I'm not saying that a change wouldn't work, but I just don't have much faith that another individual coming in can massively change Manchester United. I think it's been a structural problem which goes right back to the top and the club have reset. They said they've reset the, the button and there's been patience among fans but fans also need to see evidence that this, this reset is working and when you watch them against Burnley and in other games recently there's no evidence of that whatsoever and that's where the frustration comes from. Mm. I think if you brought in a, a top manager tomorrow he's going to come in and say right these players aren't good enough for me. I need to bring eight or nine new players in. And then there's a danger there that you're back to the same position that you're in when Mourinho came in, when Louis van Gaal came in. Football managers like to bring their own players in and, and, and do things their own way. It's a real mess at the moment. Solskjaer was saying after the game, we've had X amount of games since the beginning of, of December and the players are stretched. Some have played more than they should have and more mentally than physically, they need a mid-season break uh, in early February, I think is what he was suggesting there. Like It, it comes a, as a timely reminder of the situation with Marcus Rashford. Some confusion, I think it's fair to say, in the media about whether or not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer actually forced Marcus Rashford to play through injuries. What's your information on that? Is there a bit of a tension between Solskjaer and Rashford and actually uh, ensuring that he did play minutes because, let's face it, he's Manchester United's best player at the moment and he needed him? He's the best player. I think mistakes have been made. I think too many players have played too many minutes. But that goes back to the point that at the start of the season, the squad looked, looked, looked thin. Manchester United knew they were going to play in the Europa League. If they were going to do well in that, there'd be more games than in the Champions League. They've actually done well in the League Cup, They're still in the FA Cup. They've had a replay in the FA Cup so far. So you had a situation in December and January where Manchester United they played 18 matches. It's a huge total. Hmm. injuries then come so why wasn't the squad strengthened at the start of the season the counter argument to that is we want to let young players come through we want to give them chance and some of the bright spots of this season are that Brandon Williams has been able to come through um, Mason Greenwood's been able to come through but it's much better to be putting young players into a winning side people talk of the class of 92 those lads were joining world-class footballers around them and Manchester United have got a massive uh, quality shortage at the moment and it's even worse when players are injured uh, as the, I've mentioned the ones who are injured. It's going to be a nervous couple of weeks I'd imagine Andy like you mentioned this weekend but then you've got the return leg of the Manchester City tie in the Carabao Cup you've then got Wolves like you mentioned the, the classic Stoke fixture that Manchester United used to have at Old Trafford the Wolves thing has very much been a, a thorn in their side in recent times but almost more present than that is the fact that it's at Old Trafford. What sort of atmosphere do you expect for that Wolves game? Well, more of the same. If Manchester United don't beat Wolves, then the discontent will continue. United did beat Wolves last week. They had to bring mm. Rashford on to set up the goal to beat Wolves. They're taking risks because the squad is so threadbare. They need players back. Players don't look like they're coming back imminently. It's a results game. Every football manager knows it's a results business. And... If the team are winning, then the clouds dissipate briefly. Or, if, And it's more about results at the moment. It's not even performances. That's how desperate things are at the moment. Um, any loss to Manchester City, even though it's expected, will still sting. Just as the, the defeat at Anfield on Sunday, that was expected. But it still hurt Manchester United fans, just as it would Liverpool fans if it was the other way around. And the mood is bad. The lows seem to be getting lower uh, at Manchester United. And that's not good enough. Fans... Have been very patient, but they needed to see evidence of some kind of improvement. They didn't expect a challenge for the title this year, but at the moment they're seeing very little. Mm. Just, just to bring the whole conversation then full circle, finally, Andy, just to go back to those Rio Ferdinand quotes, the legacy of what we're seeing at the moment, the kids watching Manchester United. You mentioned the lows are getting lower at the moment. 
if that continues to happen, people aren't going to uh, at least pick up supporting Manchester United. Is it too dramatic uh, a sort of take to be talking in those terms, to not be talking about the present, but actually the medium to long term, where if this success uh, continues to evade the club, you won't have new supporters, you won't have bums and seats eventually, uh, and you will see the scenes of last night continuing to happen? Them, them are absolutely massive, and so are Liverpool. They are, by a distance, the biggest English clubs. In 2013, Liverpool played a friendly in Melbourne in front of 90,000 people. There are many similarities between those two clubs. Of course, uh, f- some fans will always go to the most successful team. I'm sure Manchester City and Chelsea have picked up fans in the last decade. But United and Liverpool, I'd never underestimate the, the breadth of their support. When Manchester United were in the second division in 1974, they would have still the best supported team in the whole of England. It was a winning team, admittedly, and they're not seeing enough of that now. But I think that you, there's still a massive, massive global support. And if anything, I think it, I think it's growing. I really do. Because as a result of the, the Premier League becoming more popular, and also when Manchester United are not doing well, it's like people like to watch the car crash. It's still a huge story. They get very, very frustrated, like I feel this morning, but they don't turn off. They still watch it in the hope, this irrational hope sometimes among football fans, that it'll turn. Yeah, to be honest with you, if there's one little glory you can take from the season, is there's probably more people interested in Manchester United than Liverpool right now, even though it is a bit of a, a car crash. Andy Mitten, thanks a million for taking the call. Thank you. Andy Mitten there of United We Stand, the Manchester United fanzine. 